Victor. I can't hear you. Hello. I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. So. I can hear you now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's continue. Let's start. So. So the other day we were talking about changing the way that you view the market and how you enter and how you leave trades, which is very important. So today I just wanted to 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 brush up to ex um, to explain more on that concerning demand demand support and demand demand and supply zones and support and resistance so you are familiar with those as well yeah those terms okay. yeah so i'll just continue so basically what what we discussed the other day was about following the trend and not actually trying to predict what the yes. market is trying to do yeah yes so all we have to do is, first of all, know where, know... Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with those terms. But the only issue is that I don't know how to draw the supply zone. Yeah, so that's what I'm about to teach you now. So supply and demand. Supply is basically an area where traders are looking to offload okay. a certain asset. It has reached a... Uh, a maximum price at which sellers feel they need to take profit, like offload what they bought at a certain price. So supply is basically, is also known as, you can refer it to as a resistance zone. Okay. Any, any area that you find price fi having difficulty in mitigating, in passing, if you will, like, this is a supply zone and also a resistant, resistant zone. So you can basically just have your line there to signify a supply or a resistance level. You can also refer to that level as the range highs of where price has touched. Then secondly, it's where whereas demand or support is the opposite of supply and resistance. So basically, it's just a ground level where price has, where price accumulates and has trouble breaking okay. low. So that's the difference between demand and, and support. You understand? That's the difference between demand and um, what is it called? Supply. 
so you should not so you should not try to confuse them both so this is supply Why well, this is demand. So it, it also works the same way in the lower time frame. This is actually the daily time frame. So it's important for us to know where we are currently in the market. And higher time frames are the most important time frame in when trading the markets because these are le these levels show you exactly where price is and where price is about to go. The, the lower time frames are basically there. The moves actually start in the lower time frames, but they are also good for entries. But the daily time frames are very, very the, the higher time frames, sorry, are very, very important for you to know the direction or the trend of a particular market. So looking at the markets now, we just brushed off this area here around 1.12. Are you following? Victor, are you following? Can I continue? Hello, Victor. Yes, yes, I'm following, follow Okay. So basically, this, if this is... Yeah, I'm following, I'm following. Okay. So if this is the supply zone and this is the demand zone, obviously what, what we seek to do in these areas are, qu are quite different. So when you are at is resistance or supply zone, you'll be looking to sell the market. And when you're in a demand zone or are you still following so when you're a demand demand or support level you're looking to long the market to the upside so basically what you do is patience is very very important in the market so when you get Sorry. to this level can you can you hear me Why not get a good network so that we'll save our time? Can you hear me? Yeah, and the network was working well since morning. All of a sudden, you start acting on this evening. Well, you can hear me now. Uh, I can hear you. I can hear you. So, so what I said was, when you get, I can to, hear you. Well. I can yeah, hear you yeah, so, yeah. Let's continue. So, when you get to a demand zone, like. An example is this level. So price price plummeted from this previous high here and it came down to this level here. As you can see, it failed. It failed to cross this particular line here. What it means is actually that price has started to accumulate at this level. Hence, you will see, let's go to the four, four hour time frame. Hence, you see price start to move sideways. It's not really trending upwards. It's not trending downwards. What price is doing here is it's currently accumulating volume for it to push to another direction, which since you are in a support or demand zone, price is supposed to push to the upside. All you have to do is wait for the market to break towards the upside. When price starts to give maybe 
if price starts to leave this zone here, you'll be looking to start to long the market to the upside. As you can see, a lot of traders, there is what we call the cough. We get into that maybe in our second month. It's it's a pretty important, pretty advanced strategy that we use in determining where price wants to start to change direction and let traders know when to enter and when to leave the market. So with Wyckoff, you can be able to detect exactly where this price, price is about to start to move to the upside. But since now we're just focusing on a retail level, all you have to do is this zone will automatically be your change of character. So what it means is that when price breaks this level, you know that the, the trend is about to change because we consistently was creating higher lows here, higher lows here. And as you can see, price broke at this level here. When price break at this level here, you will understand, you will know that price is about to change direction. So this, this is where the move happens. And immediately the price changes direction. We start to move to the upside and we get a retest and it keeps on moving to the upside. Do you understand? Do you understand, Victor? Yes, yes, I understand, yes. Okay, good. So that's what we do in at the demand zones. So it's also the same thing that happens in supply zone. You wait for the market to change, to change character. So when the character changes, all you have to do is to follow the trend of the market. As you can see here, when price gets to this level, it creates a kind of fake out to manipulate traders in thinking that the price is going to keep on going higher. But as long as price stays below this level, below this this, this um, resistant line, all you have to do is short the market and, and have a really nice um, risk to reward ratio. You can, let's go to the 15 minute time frame so I can show you how you can position yourself in when you get a particular trade like that. So let's see price, price tries to move from this level and it comes back down here. All you have to do is wait for price to come down back within this zone and place your trade here. Your stop loss should be slightly above this high here, above or maybe exactly at the, at the line there because you know that price might not be able to come back there. And even if it does, it won't be able to pass this level again because direction has changed already. So all you have to do is you can keep your take profit anywhere you want now at this level or any other level that you want. And the trade will always go your way. All you have to do is to patiently wait for it to reach your level and you take profit. So that's basically how to enter trades in these zones. So it's the same, the same idea when you're at the at demand zones as well. All you have to do is wait for the fake out. It reclaims to that level. Patiently wait. You execute your trade. You place your stop loss at a very reasonable area, and you take profit at the easiest and fastest place you can put it to make sure you make sure you leave the trade immediately and don't get greedy greed doesn't help anybody at all in the market all you have to do here is since you have your entry you wait you wait for it to come down 
And when he does, you take profit and you leave the market. You don't trade anymore until you see you see another amazing opportunity for you to enter the market again. Do you understand? Yes, I understand this concept. Okay, good. So let's so I want to I wanted to go to the higher time frame and show you how I can mark out these levels so you can be able to do it on your own. So first of all, do you know how to use Fibonacci? No, no, I don't know how to use Fibonacci. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to pull up my I'm going to pull up my Fibonacci tool here so that you can be able to take a snapshot and set it on your own. Okay. So or you, you take a snapshot of this template here. So this is how you're going to set it. Once you go to your Fibonacci, you you highlight, you select these particular ones, turn off all the colors, make it just clean and nice, like I did mine. So the first one will be zero. You you tick the box, then you tick zero point five, you tick zero point seven eight six one and minus zero point two seven. That's all you need. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Did, have you sorry? I use my MT4. Your I'm what? I'm taking a snap. I use I normally use an MT4 for my analysis. MT4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you can use MT4 and you can use MT5. That's just an application you use to trade the market. What connects you to the actual financial market is actually a broker. So it doesn't really matter which um, version of the meta trader you use. The most important thing yes. is the broker. So, but you use trading view for your analysis. Do you know how to use trading view? No, I have trading view. Definitely, I will start practicing with trading view now. Yeah, you have to use trading view. So let me explain to you how. Okay. How let me just give you like a slight lesson of how Fibonacci works. So Fibonacci is like I think it was created by a mathematician. I think Italian or so. I'm not really sure. So he cre he believed that price moves at certain ranges at a time at a particular period of time. And these are the ranges. A lot of other traders use different numbers. You can see some, some individuals using 61%, or you can see some individuals using 37%. I, I don't necessarily use those ones, but if I want to implement them in the Fibonacci tool, I can. But basically, this is the most relevant zones in the Fibonacci retracement tool. So basically, 100% is like, I refer to it as a resistant point. It depends on where price is moving. So you can technically okay. use it for, use it in an uptrend and use it in a downtrend as well. But you downtrend. have to tweak it. Yeah, you have to tweak it upside down if it's in an uptrend. But if it's in a, bearish trend you have to face it like this so what i mean is if it's in if 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 it's if it's if it's in an uptrend you use it like this so your 100 percent will be down but if it's in a bearish okay. trend the 100 percent will be up so this is our take profit okay. level so let's say the market is trending upwards let me use my draw here. So if the market is trending upwards, so these are the levels price normally come to touch before the market gets to where it's supposed to go. So the way it works is, sorry, I don't mind my line. So this is like a trend. So if market starts to move, uh, move, uh, move uh, from, 
yeah move from this level all you, all you have to do is wait for the market to reach certain levels and these are premium levels in the market 50 percent zero percent and the minus 27 percent so if let's say you enter here you take it long from this level and you have your stop loss here at 100 percent or maybe beyond 100 percent your take profit should be around zero 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 percent or the minus 27 percent so basically 27%. yes so how price works actually price usually will touch all these percentage levels most especially the zero percent and the 27 percent so it's really nice to have your take profit there and you can see you can see how okay. how positioned your stop loss and your entry is so it gives you the confidence to hold the market to till it gets to your take profit or it hits your stop loss and you get out of the trade and you don't trade and you look for a new entry if you believe that the market is still bullish okay. yeah so that's basically so that's basically the idea of Fibonacci. But the other advantage of Fibonacci is it helps to it help determine where the range where the range is where the where where the terms in the range are. So let's see, let's go back to the chart now. So you have determined that this is the range high and this is the range low. All you have to do is you can use your Fibonacci tool now to you put you take it from 100% and 0%, 0%. So all you have to do is you can use another tool like this one to mark this out. So basically what you have done is you have marked out the range high, the mid range and the range low. So the way price moves in a, in a range is quite simple and straightforward. Like it's, it's distinct. So since we have determined here that EU is in a range from this point to this point. So when price break the mid range level here, you will be expecting price to maybe within the space of a couple of days, depending on the particular time frame that you're on. So since we're in a daily time frame, every candle here is one day. This is one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day. So basically, yes. it's going to take a lot of time for price to get to this level, to this level, and this level. You understand? So, but yes, in, yes. but in the lower time frames, things happen quite fast. So if you go to the fifteen minute or the one hour time frame and you have a range there, you see a range. Obviously, the range can be completed within a day, or even an hour. Lesser than compared to the daily and the weekly time frame. So basically, all you have to do is since you have determined your trend, you know that it's bearish and you know your range high, mid range, range low. All you have to do is wait for the market to give you an entry position. And as you remember, you don't enter, you don't sell the market at demand zones and you don't buy the market at supply zones. You do the opposite. You understand? Yes, yes. So yeah, so now that price has approached the mid-range level, this is a significant level. And that is why you see price, as price touched here, you can see that it's actually reacting to this level. Immediately it dropped down, it's reclaimed up. It came back up to cover all the drop that happened today. This drop happened today and it went back up. So if price fails to hold this level, which is a significant level, we can, if we, can, we can expect price to maybe soar higher. 
and maybe come back to maybe come back to test this level or this level. So if price fails to if price fails to um fails to break this this um demand zone here, as you can see, this is a demand zone because it's below where price is, and as you can see, price is actually consolidating there. So you know that. Sorry, please let me just search for that particular chart. Yeah. So it's quite easy to see that price is having trouble st staying here. So you know that it's a significant level. So if price doesn't break down here and keeps on going down, you can expect price to go up as long as the price starts to accumulate here and create so sort of a, a, a side, sideways movement here. And we start to get a break of structure all you have to do is make sure you get the break of structure and then you have your entry here and you can place your stop loss anywhere you want depending on how much you want to risk in your account then you can take your take profit here if you want to be conservative if you want to be aggressive you can you can have it here because easily price can come back to this level because there's the the price is actually in a range here, as you can see. So you can see that price has been actually moving sideways here, but based on it's on the higher time frames, the moves are really, really massive. So this is the move from here to here will make you a lot of money. The move here to will make you a lot of money. And the move down here will make you a lot of money. So, but the market is actually just moving sideways until you came down here. So, as long as price doesn't doesn't break doesn't break this level here, we'll still be bearish in the market. So, you, all you have to do is just to know where you are in the market. You understand? Let me remove all the joints so you can see everything clearly. So you just have to know exactly where you are in the market because you already understand how the trend works. This is high, high. But well, as you can see, price continuously to create higher lows and lower lows. As long as it keeps creating that certain trend and, and it doesn't break, you're still in a downtrend. So you don't change your bias for any reason. There's no reason for you to so and this this is lower low so that's basically how a, a downtrend works and i believe you understand this concept so it's with time you'll be able to see so i already know i already know where these these zones are so i don't necessarily have to be writing higher low and lower low i can see it with my eyes when i look at the chart so with time and practice and if you spend a lot of time with, in the chart you'll be able to yes. you'll be able to you'll be able to um see these zones without without necessarily having to draw a line or whatever you understand so price is continuously creating higher lows and lower lows so we're still in yes, yes. we're still very much in a bearish trend so all you have to do is you won't be it's not advisable to be selling around this zone here like it doesn't make any sense to be selling here until let's say maybe if let's say until maybe if we get maybe a strong push down of this this level here and price 
and price is not able to reclaim back to this level and maybe we get a another lower low here and price comes back here and fails to come back down fails to hold that level and it comes back down then i'll definitely be looking to maybe short the market there at this level and have my take profit at anywhere that i want i feel like i i'm satisfied with my profit always as a trader it's always important for you to have one to at least one to ratio three or one to ratio two so if you want to leave it here it's also fine you are risking one percent of your account to make to make 3.9 percent so that's basically how to manage risks in your account when you make when you make a lot of profits, it's important for you to keep the profit and not give them back or not take out the profit when you make them. So it's important for you to have stop loss and take profit. So you understand, yeah? So that's basically, that's yes, basically, that's basically yeah. yeah. So that's basically how the chain works. As long as price doesn't break this higher, higher low here, we are still bearish. So that's why, that's why if you check my Twitter account, I posted a signal where I was expecting price was here. I think price was around this zone here, but I was expecting price to come back here to break out there to give, to give um, the market makers the, the hedge funds and all those guys that control the market an advantage to take out profits from those retail traders that sells early. They know that it's in a downtrend, but your a retail trader won't expect this large move to happen like this. He would, he he might just okay see this move from here to here, and he might think okay the market's not able to push above this level, so he might sell here and get ends up getting taken out. If he, even if you have your stop loss here or here you'll be taking out because price will always create a massive deviation so, yes do you understand that's how yes, the understand. yeah that's how um market makers do manipulate retail traders so when price gets to this level here it's easy for it's easy for everyone else to enter the market here and just sell the market here because mm -hmm price failed to stay above this higher higher low here so if price stays above this level here above this level here yes. you can start looking for maybe if it soars higher and comes back down turns here into yes. turns this resistance level here into support you can start looking for longs and maybe the trend has changed automatically so you start looking for for more for more um higher high and higher lows so that's what you yes exactly so that's what you be you be looking for higher high here higher low higher high higher low higher so that's basically that's basically how to follow structure so i just taught you how to structure your trade how to understand how trends work and how to when to enter and when not to enter and when to leave a trade yeah. so so you need to be familiar with this method it will help you a lot in knowing when to enter a trade and when not to enter a trade so basically so basically so so I just we just um talked about so demand, support, supply, and resistance zones. So um the reason why I know you have been trying a lot of patterns, and the reason why patterns don't work anymore is because the markets markets are constantly changing. Those trends and patterns that you learned before don't necessarily work because you have yeah. to adapt to the market. The market is always changing. It's yeah. very dynamic. So it's important for you to always follow where price is trying to go and not try to predict where price is trying to, where you think price is going to. You have to just follow the trend. If it's selling, you sell. If it wants to buy, you buy. 
you get in and you get out. So it's important for you not to predict. It's important for you to focus on certain markets. Like if you like trading Euro USD, I suggest you focus on it and learn it, learn how it moves, you back test and do not over trade. Do I not like over I normally trade uh, GBP USD. Okay. Okay, okay. So I know even when the downtrend started, I was actually following it while I lost uh I took profit and I closed the summary trade. So since then I've been losing money trying to buy it up or the end. Okay, yeah. So you're still in a downtrend, so you shouldn't be trying to buy the market now. So yeah. So and you don't revenge trade. When you lose money, you don't try to try to get the money back immediately. Don't revenge uh -huh. trade. And well, like one of my biggest problems is this psychology of it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sometimes uh, I when I lose money, I will see the nearest available trade. But to enter the trade, I'll start entering to a smaller lot size. I will not be at anything. So yeah, it's, it's important for you to try to discipline yourself and know when to trade and when not to trade. So we're running out of time. So, but we have covered almost everything about psychology. So the next thing we'll get into, which is tomorrow, will be definitely be how to how to enter how to enter trades basically. Okay. Yeah, so I'll I'll be showing you how to how to um how to understand structure more. Structure is very important. So since you already understand how higher lows, high high, and all those stuff, so it will be easy for us to yes. dissect it more and more, and to get um a little bit of tricks that I've learned over the years, and I'll just share everything with you to okay. get yeah to have a lot of conference or insights before you take your trades okay. so yeah and yeah patience patience is very important in the game so that will also help you a lot in the market as well so yeah okay. so, so, yeah, so. tomorrow tomorrow i'll be i'll be free tomorrow so if we can start in the morning oh okay no problem i'll send you me. i'll send you a link in the morning that's fine Okay. okay. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I know this concept. Maybe I'll I'll try and look look at a uh, one or two charts and try and follow this. Yeah, yeah. You step. can be back. You can be back testing them time time to time. It's important. Back you know, testing you know. is nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so are I, we done for the day? Yeah, yeah. We're done for the day. So I, right, Victor, we'll, we'll continue tomorrow morning. Tomorrow. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks.